John Brown was an American college football player and film actor billed as John Mack Brown at the height of his screen career. He acted and starred mainly in Western films. Early life born and raised in Dothan, Alabama, Brown was the son of Ed and Maddie Brown, one of eight siblings. His parents were shopkeepers. He was a star of the high school football team, earning a football scholarship to the University of Alabama. His little brother Tolbert Red Brown played with Mack in 1925. After he finished college, he sold insurance and later coached the freshman running backs on the University of Alabama's football team. University of Alabama While at the University of Alabama, Brown became an initiated member of Kappa Sigma fraternity. Football Brown was a prominent halfback on his university's Crimson Tide football team, coached by Wallace Wade. He earned the nickname, the Dothan Antelope, and was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Pop Warner called him, one of the fastest football players I've ever seen. 1924 The 1924 team lost only to center. Brown starred in the defeat of Georgia Tech. 1925 Brown helped the 1925 Alabama Crimson Tide football team to a national championship. In that year's Rose Bowl, he earned most valuable player honors after scoring two of his team's three touchdowns in an upset win over the heavily favored Washington Huskies. The 1925 Crimson Tide was the first Southern team to ever win a Rose Bowl. The game is commonly referred to as, the game that changed the South. Brown was selected all Southern. Film career starting at the top Brown's good looks and powerful physique saw him portrayed on Weedy cereal boxes and in 1927, brought an offer for motion picture screen tests that resulted in a long and successful career in Hollywood. That same year, he signed a five-year contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. He played silent film star Mary Pickford's love interest in her first talkie, Coquette, for which Pickford won an Oscar. He appeared in minor roles until 1930 when he was cast as the star in a western entitled Billy the Kid and directed by King Vidor. An early widescreen film, the movie also stars Wallace Beery as Pat Garrett. Brown was billed over Beery, who would become MGM's highest paid actor within the next three years. Also in 1930, Brown played Joan Crawford's love interest in Montana Moon. Brown went on to make several more top flight movies under the name John Mack Brown, including The Secret Six with Wallace Beery, Gene Harlow, and Clark Gable, as well as the legendary Lost Generation celebration of alcohol, The Last Flight and was being groomed by MGM as a leading man until being abruptly replaced on Laughing Sinners in 1931, with all his scenes reshot, substituting rising star Clark Gable in his place. MGM and director Woody Van Dyke screen tested him for the lead role of Tarzan the Ape Man but Van Dyke didn't feel he was tall enough. Steep decline rechristened Johnny Mac Brown. In the wake of this extremely serious career downturn, he made low-budget westerns for independent producers and he never regained his former status. Eventually he became one of the screen's top B-movie cowboys, and became a popular star at Universal Pictures in 1937. After starring in four serials, in 1939 he launched a series of 29 B-westerns over the next four years, all co-starring Fuzzy Knight as his comic sidekick, and the last seven teaming him with Tex Ritter. This is considered the peak of his B-western career, thanks to the studio's superior production values. Noteworthy titles include Son of Roaring Dan, Raiders of San Joaquin and The Lone Star Trail, the latter featuring a young Robert Mitchum as the muscle heavy. A fan of Mexican music, Brown showcased the talents of guitarist Francisco Mayorga and the Guadalajara trio in films like Boss of Bullion City and The Masked Rider. Brown also starred in a 1933 mascot picture serial Fighting with Kit Carson, and four serials for Universal. Brown moved to Monogram Pictures in 1943 to replace that studio's cowboy star Buck Jones, who had died months before. Brown's Monogram series was immediately successful and he starred in more than 60 westerns over the next 10 years, including a 20 movie series playing Nevada Jack McKenzie, opposite Buck Jones's old sidekick Raymond Hatton, beginning with the 1943 film The Ghost Rider. Brown was also featured in two higher budgeted dramas, Forever Yours and Flame of the West, both released by Monogram in 1945 and both billing the actor under his former, a picture, name, John Mack Brown. When Monogram abandoned its brand name in 1952, Johnny Mack Brown retired from the screen. He returned more than ten years later to appear in secondary roles in a few Western films. Altogether, Brown appeared in more than 160 movies between 1927 and 1966, as well as a smattering of television shows, in a career spanning almost 40 years. Personal life Brown was married to Cornelia, Connie, Foster from 1926 until his death in 1974, and they had four children. Recognition for his contributions to the film industry, Brown was inducted into the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1960 with a motion picture star at 6101 Hollywood Boulevard. He received a posthumous Golden Boot Award in 2004 for his contributions to the Western entertainment genre. In 1969, Brown was inducted into the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. Brown's hometown holds an annual Johnny Mac Brown Western Festival because, if anyone ever brought attention to Dothan, it was Johnny Mac Brown, a city official said. In popular culture Brown is mentioned in the novel From Here to Eternity.
In a barrack scene, soldiers discuss Western films, and one asks, Remember Johnny Mac Brown? resulting in a discussion. From March 1950 to February 1959, Dell Comics published a Johnny Mac Brown series of comic books. He also was included in 21 issues of Dell's giant series Western Roundup Comics that began in June 1952. In 1974, Lester Roadhog, Moran and the Cadillac Cowboys released Alive at the Johnny Mac Brown High School, a comedy album set at a fictitious school named after Brown. Death Brown died in Woodland Hills, California, of heart failure at the age of 70. His cremated remains are interred in an outdoor columbarium, in Glendale's Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery. <laughs>